Dungeons and Drimbus is rated R for rude language, rough violence, and raunchy humor. I do declare, here's what happened previously on Dungeons and Drimbus. With Calvin gone, Gary goes out on the search. Unable to find his son, he collapses in the snow. Awakened in the monastery, he prepares for the procedure to finally remove Fulmar's soul from his. Gary dies, encounters Fulmar in a spiritual plane, and is brought back, cured of his condition. He then decides the best course of action is to meet up with the boys in Opula, but not before stopping in to check on his ma. The townsfolk gather up supplies and send them on their way. On the road, they encounter an abomination before it is attacked by Tony and Popcorn. I do declare, your honor is back in session. Roll for initiative! <laughs> that is a 17. First up is the Abomination. The Abomination is going to rise up, and as its turn begins, they are standing on two hooves, fire mains glowing, Tony's glowing blue, popcorn's glowing yellow, and that burst of fire energy hits them. You see them both get kicked back with the energy as they take some blows. However, they are looking so much stronger than when you last saw them. They look like they have leveled up incredibly as the monster is then going to rise up and it is going to attempt to gaze directly into Tony's eyes. Tony rolls a net 20 on that constitution <laughs> saving throw as he glares right back. You see the abomination's featureless face glare at him. Tony's eyes glow with the white blue energy and he seems absolutely fine. As Tony is indeed up next, Tony is going to charge up to the abomination, hooves glowing and go in for a powerful kick. That hits. He's going to deal 16 points of damage as he like swings out his front hooves to like jam himself between two trees and then like picks his lower half of his body up and drives his lower hooves <laughs> into the abomination's chest, leaving a searing magical scorch on the creature's chest. He is beginning to near the kind of battered, bloodied stage where you feel like uh, a, a couple of good rounds of hits could take him down quickly. Grizabeth is gonna do her best to fire that bow. Oh, and she lands a hit. She goes, oh my God, is that Tony? <laughs> and as she does, <laughs> fires the arrow and the arrow goes flying and actually digs into the center mass of the abomination's chest. <laughs> going through and kind of like for a moment pinning it to the tree. However, you get the feeling that this for some reason is less effective than it would be on most creatures as it just breaks the arrow off and slides itself off the tree. Gary, it is your turn. Gary's gonna run towards the abomination and rage. Roll 2d8. That's five. You run right up to the abomination, standing beside your beloved pony for the first time in weeks. And as you gaze at this hardened, blackened creature, your own hardened, blackened body, you rage. And that same burst of light that it just emitted comes out of you, poof, dealing five points of damage to it, Tony, and Popcorn. Okay, yes. Now that Gary's in rage, he's going to take is clawed hand and slash at the abomination. Okay, roll that for me. A 19 will hit. Yes, it will. And yeah, an unnatural 20 will hit. Yes, it will. And Gary's going to carve an X with that clawed hand, 22, as he does 12 points of damage. Even though you're coming with 
power as you hit its hard, almost plasticky chest. You can't quite dig in as deep as you feel like you should. It, it feels like that flesh is resisting you. And then you see popcorn flipping through the air, coming in with another <laughs> hoof attack. <laughs> Oof. And he just misses as he is bringing a haymaker while he chews on some hay into the, the side of the creature's head. And the creature just barely ducks out of the way and popcorn cuts <laughs> knocking the tree in half and just taking that top half straight off. The abomination is then up. It is then going to prepare a fist and come up towards your neck, Gary, since you are standing directly in front of him. Does a 23 hit you? Yes. Okay, you are going to take five bludgeoning damage as the fist comes up and just poof, grabs you like straight in the throat. It, it almost feels like your windpipe like dislodges for a second. And as it squeezes, you feel it like leech life out of you. And you take 10 points of necrotic damage as it squeezes, digging its, the tips of its pointed claws into your neck. It is holding you by the throat. It begins to lift you up off the ground. It is taller than you still because you're still mostly goblin sized. And as it does so, it stares into your eyes. Please roll a wisdom saving throw. Four. As you feel it stare into your soul, you suddenly become very frightened and you take 31 points of necrotic damage as you begin to shake in fear staring at this creature with that as the creature holds you up leeching energy out of you you hear tony go <laughs> as he prepares a flaming blue bite chomps into the abomination's neck you see some of those black vapors ooze off <sighs> The creature releases you. You fall into the snow, quivering, and you hear Tony just going, <laughs> as he continues to dig into its neck. Next up is Grizzabeth. Grizzabeth goes, Gary, are you okay? I don't hear a response. I'm so worried. No, no. <laughs> In her worry, she rolls a crit failure and accidentally shoots herself in the foot, quite literally. Just, go. Uh, she grazed it. Like, it didn't go through the foot. It just, like, stubbed a tone. She goes, ah, oh, Gary. Which brings us to Gary's turn. Gary, frightened out of his mind, just, like, takes one look at the abomination, then puts, like, his hand in front of his face to cover his eyes. And with the other hand, he extends it out towards the abomination <laughs> and uses poison spray. Critical failure. Please roll double damage on poison spray. Mm, baby, a trip. Uh, wait, I'm assuming poison spray does poison damage, correct? Yes. You, as you release this, you go, oh shit, and you can just, boom, you, boom. you can just tell the poison isn't going to work. However, in the creature's damaged state, it has like chunks of the plasticky skin peeling off and it spectacularly fails this constitution as its immune system lowers and you can deal half damage to it because of the critical failure. So please roll regular damage, half it, and you will take it. <laughs> Come on with this roll. Yo! What the f- I roll three two. <laughs> Shit, okay. Which becomes three. Three. You see that poison seep into like the broken parts of his neck where Tony just tore off a chunk of dark immaterial flesh. And you see it like holds a claw up to a gun. It's very confused. It has never felt this sensation before, as that seems to hurt. Popcorn is going to run straight at it with its hooves. Its hoof, his hooves are no longer glowing, but you see a blazing trail left behind him in that glowing yellow energy. That definitely hits. Okay, Popcorn lands this one as he flies at him like Superman. Hooves extended out in front of him. Hits him with the hooves. The hooves are no longer glowing and they don't leave those searing like magical marks on him. And so you get the feeling that it just kind of takes the blow in stride. However, it then rolls a saving throw. Fails it by one as Popcorn knocks the abomination prone. You now have advantage on attacks against it which are canceled out with your disadvantage from the frightened. So you can now attack it normally as it then becomes the abomination's turn again. The abomination is going to turn its head up, look at Popcorn who just attacked it and try to glare at him again. As he turns up to look at him, his eyes kind of, they don't glow. It's the 
opposite of glow. They become so dark that it's like hard to look at. And you see Popcorn makes eye contact with him, feels immense fear. <laughs> the fire goes out entirely. Popcorn just looks like a regular horse again, flames extinguish, and he drops to the ground, seemingly completely incapacitated, possibly dead. As it then becomes Tony's turn, Tony is going to enrage, see that go, <laughs> and bring his hooves down, just batter him while he is down on the ground still. Natural 20! Oh my god, but he rolls two ones. However, with his bonuses intact and the magic glowing through his hooves, he batters the creature. Boom, boom, boom! He goes, <laughs> and he brings both hooves over his horsey head, brings it down on the creature's back, just battering it and dispelling it as the creature explodes into black mist. Please roll a constitution saving throw. 19. You only take three points of poison damage as the creature's body explodes in that black mist, throwing everyone back. <laughs> and before you can even kind of pick yourself back up and realize what happens, you see Tony has run over, he ceases glowing, and he begins trying to pump on Popcorn's chest for CPR. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run over to Popcorn and try okay. to help heal. Can you give me a medicine check? Wealth. You begin to do CPR <laughs> with Tony blowing into Popcorn's mouth desperately. Between you and Popcorn's death saving throw, you see that he slowly begins to stabilize. <laughs> <laughs> Popcorn, is that really you? Oh my God. He nods his head and then like just closes his eyes and like, isn't passed out, but is just resting in the snow out of energy. And Tony looks up at you. <gasps> Tony? Tony uh, nuzzles up against you immediately. Oh, I give Tony a big hug. Yeah, he is prancing around you. Just You can tell he is elated to see you. And you hear Grizzabeth go, come on, come on, yeah. And you hear the carriage roll forward a couple of feet. As she goes, oh my god, Gary, you're okay, is that Tony? Grace, oh my god, you, you fart. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> Get that yeah. out of you. <laughs> she grazed the edge of her foot, so it cut through her shoe, and there's just like a little trickle of blood coming out. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Oh, sh I, I, it's so oh, he pets Popcorn's maid, he brushes yeah. it, it's like, oh, this poor fella's gotta, we gotta <laughs> put him on the carriage, I guess. I, Okay, oh, okay. Tony. Uh, um, come on, Meg, help us out. And as she begins to roll the carriage forward, you see Meg takes a look at Tony in his new form and goes, "What?" Uh, and Tony looks back and runs a hoof through his mane. Tony, I can't believe it. What, what happened? Uh, I'm so sorry, but I'm so <laughs> happy to see you. <laughs> He's like shaking his head, like, "No, no, it's okay." And he goes. <laughs> There's no way! That's, that's insane! You're telling me! Oh! And it, it looks like you see like the light bulb ding in his head and he remembers something. And he like kind of gestures to his side saddle bag. And, and I go to his side saddle bag and I don't open it. And inside the side saddle bag, you see a book. Any title on it? <laughs> As you pull the book out, you see it is this like hardcover bound leather spell book. It is this like <laughs> almost black leather with these glowing lines through it. It kind of almost looks like star charts or something like that. And it has like a little clasp, one of those metal locking mechanisms. And as you open it, you turn to the first page and you see it says, for my star apprentice. Oh. No. And and Tony nods his head sadly. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, okay. Um, Tony, am I going to find out what happened to you in this book or no? He shakes his head no. Okay. Um, Chris? Yeah? Do we have a pen and paper? <laughs> a, a pen and paper? Yeah. Uh, Tony. 
I pretend like I know what happened, but I gotta know what the fuck happened to you. <laughs> Let's just do an animal handling roll, see if I could gather that. Okay, g- yeah, give me an animal handling roll to see if you can swing this. No, uh, you know, there's no pet. Just if I got this right, let me see. Yes, 23, come on. Okay, I'll tell you this. You can't understand, like, it's not like Scooby-Doo. You yeah, can't yeah, understand yeah. Tony, right? But you somehow managed to gather just a little bit of Tony's journey. Okay. Something happened after you left. You have gathered that, yes, Ostrogon died. And you have gathered that Tony was under Jessica's service for a while, as well as some new people. You can't quite make out who, he can't pronounce names. You do gather that he and Popcorn both decided to run away to come find you. Along the way, you don't quite know how, but you gather that Tony made a stop somewhere, or several stops at least, in which he tried his best to study some of the magic that he remembered from you and from some pages he stole from Ostrogon's spellbook. Other than that, a lot of stuff gets muddied because you can't make out the characters along the way. You get the the sense that it was a wild journey. Some people helped him study. He fought a lot of things on the way here. He's seen a lot of things. He can kind of give you a demonstration as he shows you Leomund's tiny chest that Ostrogon had once cast to get you the outfit out of. And you see that Ostrogon had been working on a special spell book for you. Uh, please roll an arcana check for me. Natural. Fucking 20. Natural fucking 20. Laser eyes. You understand exactly what this spell book is. It was specifically crafted for you by Ostrogon. You get the feeling he maybe didn't get to put the finishing touches on it. But nonetheless, with this spell book, you get a couple of special abilities that you immediately understand. First of all, in the pages of the book, you see there are spells already scribed for you. So you won't have to learn them. Oh you do need to prepare them and have the spell slots available to cast them. But when the time comes, you will already know these spells for free. You have Arcane Gate, Dimension Door, Gate, Misty Step, Plane Shift, Teleportation Circle, and Word of Recall. Additionally, you sense the book like vibrating with innate magic within the book itself. Like you can kind of see the magical energy glowing through the silver crisscrosses on the outer cover. And you get the feeling that there are three charges in this book that recharge once per day. And you can use the charges for two different things. Spend a minute studying the spell book and replace one of your prepared wizard spells with a different spell in the book. Or, when you're hit by an attack, you can expend a charge and your reaction to teleport up to 10 feet to an unoccupied space you can see. And if your new position is out of range of the attack, it misses you. But yeah, that is all that you glean from looking at this spell book. Wow. And you see Ostrogon's writing on the inside cover. I'm gonna tuck that away safely. <sighs> oh, I can't believe this. I'm so sorry, Tony. I, I, I didn't know where to start to find you. <laughs> he shakes his head no, and like, it's very sympathetic. Like you get the feeling that he, he had the same problem, basically. I'm just so glad, and, and I mean, you look so well off now. So I'm really happy. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so I guess I have to tell you what happened with me. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you start neighing at him. <laughs> Got that? And you see, he kind of like looks at you questioning. Like he looks to you, he looks to Grizz, and then he looks around the rest of the carriage. Like, and he looks at you like... <laughs> um, so now... Yeah, um, they got, they got Cal. They got Calvin. (laughs) You see, as you say that, he exhales and his eyes glow just a little bit. (laughs) As the hair, like, it doesn't light on fire, but it stands up like it's about to glow. And then it kind of comes back down as he breathes. (laughs) And I don't know where they are. And uh, I don't know if you've 
St. Thomas at all. I doubt it. He, he shakes his head no. Yeah. I have no idea where to start, so I'm asking them. <laughs> They're on the way, and there's somebody I'm planning to see on the way. Uh, my mother. <laughs> yeah. And uh, once I'll make a stop there, and then I'm on my way to see the boys, I have no idea if I can even trust them. Or if Jessica's with them or whatever. I have no clue what's going on with them, but it's the only, uh, it's the only lead I've got. <laughs> okay. Well, best friend, if you're ready to head on out, you, will you, will you do me the honors, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> he, like, puts himself in front of the carriage. <laughs> you load up in the carriage. Popcorn is, like, laying in the back of the carriage with your gear as he rests. Uh, Tony's hooked up. He kind of looks at Meg and goes, <laughs> lights his mane on fire and begins to trot. And with the magic, uh, he can't quite fly through the sky, but he just barely hovers off the ground. And the carriage actually takes off at like a way faster speed. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> you get the feeling that your travel times are probably going to get cut in half at least. Whoa. Seatbelt, seatbelt. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Grisabeth, like, falls out the back, is, like, holding on, like, Whoa! <laughs> But you carry on your way, and Grisabeth sits in the back, going through the rations that the townspeople of Longreach gave you, and beginning to brew some of the teas and stuff, and trying to help Popcorn recover. And she looks at you, and she says, Okay, Gary, are you ready? Yeah. Do you maybe want me to hang back for a while while you, uh... Get acquainted first. Uh, is there anything I can do for you? I, I know this is a big moment. No, you I want to introduce you to, to her. Okay. That would be really nice. Where do you think we'll find her in the town? Um, I don't know. We're just going to have to look around and, uh, I guess ask. And with that, you guys spend the next roughly three days traveling. Oof. Mama. Yeah. Which is way better than the, like, week and a half it took you to get to Long Beach. <laughs> but you spend the roughly three days traveling as you go through the scenery. Uh, it is heavy winter, so, like, it is pretty, but it is barren. You don't run into a lot of people on the roads because the only people who like traveling to and from are the people who have no choice. Because especially this far north, it is hard to get through. You see people, like, in carriages being pulled by these large, like, furry, big cats and other animals. Like, you actually don't see very many horses on the road right now. But over the course of those days, you chat with Grizabeth. You enjoy some of the snacks that the citizens packed for you. Popcorn heals pretty much the next day, and he is willing to join, and he helps pick up the pace a little bit more. And eventually, you arrive at the town of Giant's Path. You see, it is a really pretty seaside town on the East Coast. It is small. It is a farming village. Here, they're still getting winter, but it is nowhere near as heavy as up in Longreach or anything like that. And so down here, while there is snow, you see they've kind of adapted and built these, like, pavilions with these... They kind of look like magic, like, heaters almost that help keep like greenhouse areas intact. So they have areas where they're growing herbs. A lot of uh, the backs of houses have like livestock areas where they're raising sheep or pigs or cows. There's a, a beautiful little offshoot of a river, an estuary that shoots off into the ocean to the east, as well as a couple of other like small amenities here. You see like a small village smith you see the town square where there would normally be food markets and things like that, as well as a really, really pretty healing temple that has these kind of ornate limestone carvings. And yeah, you, you arrive. As you kind of get closer to town, Tony and Popcorn like descend and stop glowing and they try to chill out to blend in a little better. And, uh, you know, kids on the street wave at you. They go, hi, mister. Pretty horses. You see Tony every now and then he'll like accidentally bump into Meg. And Meg will like bump back into him as you guys are going through the town. But yeah, you arrive and Grizabeth goes, Oh my God, Gary, it is just, this is so cute. Is this where you grew up? No, no. She told me she moved here. Oh, wow. 
Looks like she's... This is a nice place, huh? Yeah, it wasn't this nice when I grew up. Um... Let's... What, what kind of buildings do I see I want to explore? <laughs> Again, most of the things you would expect in a small town, but are you looking for anything in particular? No, just want to explore. Yeah, you see people walking along the streets. Everyone seems very happy. People are taking notice of you and waving at you. They're not put off by us. They don't seem to be. In fact, you notice that a lot of the people in this town are not humans. Are they mixed races? There are some mixed species here. There are also, you know... Bugbears, you see a goblin or two, you see uh, an imp child playing in the snow, uh, very, very bundled up. <laughs> it's it's a pretty eclectic mix here. Let's uh let's bring popcorn to the healing temple first. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, you look at popcorn. He's in okay shape, but he's very tired. The flame is still out. Yeah, once once you guys got into town, the flames went out. Oh. Okay. They activate it. It's like it's like uh, when they activate the magic. Yeah, we'll, we'll go to the healing temple. Okay. As you pull into the healing temple, you stop the carriage. It's, I mean, it's kind of big at this point because you've got your cargo area and you've got now five horses pulling you. You help unhitch popcorn and you lead him in and you see a lot of healers here. They are in these long flowy robes that kind of come down. It's like a white and velvety red color scheme. It is draping. You see them tending to certain people. Some of them They have like pots of herbs gathered around the center under a skylight. And you see someone is tending to those and like pruning the ones that are ready for harvesting, bundling them up. There are other areas where you see people laying on like mats on the floor, kind of like in the monastery. And there are healers tending to them, doing checkups on them. And you walk in with this relatively large horse and everyone kind of turns to look at you and they go, whoa. Hello. Welcome. Good day, everybody. One of the kobold healers comes up to you and says, uh, Welcome to the healing temple at Giant's Path. Um, how can I be of assistance? Hey, um, good day. How are you? My uh, horse here has been uh, through a lot and uh, could use some healing. Oh, certainly. Um, we have um, a healing bath that perhaps we can... We, we do ask... Um, is he well behaved? He seems very nice. And she runs a hand over his snout. Oh yeah, it's great. Speaks common and every well understands common. Oh really? What's his name? Popcorn. Oh very well, Popcorn. Um, would you perhaps like a nice healing bath? We have some salts that are uh, very good for resting some tired muscles. <laughs> very well. Why don't you all come with me? Damn, you're gonna. I mean, they're all the uh, the other horses are kind of tired too, you know. Maybe. Um, I don't know that we have a large enough bath for all of your horses, but uh, perhaps we can definitely cue you in line and make sure that all of them get rested. Uh, popcorn, just don't tell the others. Don't, don't get jealous. He winks at you. <laughs> <laughs> can I interest you in anything to drink? Oh, uh, I'm fine. I'm good. I had I had some uh, some water. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Um, Why don't we just head this way? She kind of takes the leads and takes popcorn towards the healing bath. And at the healing bath, you see a number of people working on it right now. One of the healers is helping an older man out of the bath and helping to wrap up. Uh, You see he has like a pretty large wound across one of his quadriceps. And they're wrapping that as he gets out of the bath. The other two are pouring a mixture in. It's, it seems like a, a mixture of salts and herbs as the water kind of bubbles and boils away. And as you look at the two of them, you see one of them is a much, much older goblin woman. And Gary, you recognize her as your mother, Sophia. Ma? Ma, it's me. Garamar? Uh, he nods, yes, like slowly. <laughs> you hear Grizzabeth immediately goes, Garamar? <laughs> oh, uh, ah, uh, um, excuse me. Sophia will, like, gesture to the nurse she was working with. The nurse kind of, like, grabs the pot of herbs that you were dumping into the water and says, Oh, please do don't worry, I will, I will take care of it. Uh, thank, go for it. Thank you. And then the, the kobold, the head healer that you recognize as Madame Zaster, says, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I did not realize. 
you knew Sophia. I, um, what? oh my God. And she looks at you, Sophia, and goes, I, um, why don't you leave popcorn with me? And, uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll get out of your way. Um, <laughs> wow. Garabar. Yeah. It's that- oh, yeah. Uh, I've been working out. <laughs> Garabar, mm. f- forgive me. I, um, I don't even recognize you. <laughs> it's okay. It- been through a lot. Um, uh, how um, how about you? You tell me about it. Um, y- yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, this way. Come, follow me. Okay. good oh you know scruffles i don't know how you know how to work a mouse or use a computer but i am so grateful that you do this beyond DD thing on the dungeons and trimpus patreon oh fuck it's good oh man i i i, I can't stop listening to him i i just wish they came out faster man D- 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 geraldo and, and ralph and andrea and ralgar and and blood snout uh, fuck it, I want a pet aardvark, and I, I don't know what is up with the catechins, but there's something weird going on. Look, I, I just, oh man. Do you mind if we keep listening to a little more? Okay, 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 okay. Upstairs. Great. Uh, as you enter the room, you see Geraldo eating, like, hard bread, like travel rations, mm. as he ties bed sheets together. Uh, can I ask why you're tying bed sheets together? Don't worry about it. It's fine. And he's wearing his traveling cloak and puts the hood up to, like, cover his face. I no, 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 no. Am... You're not going anywhere. Sit your ass down. We've got to drink. Are you planning your great escape? No, I'm going to go to the fight. It's fine. I just don't want to walk through the tavern. And he begins to escape through the window of the bedroom. Okay, well, wait. Hold on. Hold I on. I stand in front of the window. Get out of the way. Wait, everyone. Let him cook. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, uh, what you- Sorry, I got a text message from uh, from Regina Russell. Oh, <laughs> she was just asking if I'd listen to the most recent episode of The Witcher over at patreon.com slash Drimbus. Uh, yeah, listening now. Man, like, I finally understand why Nikki was so into this Drimbus Patreon thing. You're telling me I get all of this, I get arts of Morkborg, Hexing Tide, Back to Basics, even behind the scenes shows for the main show? Man, this thing's good! And of course, all of my friends over on the patron Discord. Sorry, do you mind if I call Victoria Madrid? I, I just want to make sure they'd seen the episode. Yeah. Hey, Vicky! How are you? It's Daddy G. How's the kid? Great. No, yeah, I I was just calling because there's a new episode of The Witcher out over on the Patreon. I wanted to make sure you'd seen it. I know. (laughs) I don't know what the final challenge is going to be, but, I mean, it's got to be a big one, right? We're heading towards the finale. Yeah, I'm going to be sad when it's over, too. What? There are only three episodes of Your Honor Act 3 left? Oh, man, we're in for a lot of finales. I sure hope the Drimbus team has some bonus content cooked up to help us get through the hiatus. Wait, what? Season four? Yes, chef? A season of creative culinary combat? Played on the currently untitled but soon to be titled Drimbus system? Oh man, that's gonna be good. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. Okay, hey, hey, I'll, I'll let you go, because Scruffles and I are listening to the rest of the episode, but, um, yeah, we'll, we'll catch up in a bit. Okay, bye. Fuck, Scruffles, the Drimbus just keeps coming and coming. I didn't even know the Act 3 finale of Your Honor was coming up in just a few weeks, let alone Season 4. If only there were some trusted voice out there that could guide us on our Drimbus journey. Someone to give us much-needed updates, tasteful advertisements, and some welcomed, if somewhat corny, comedy. What are you doing, Scruffles? Is that... Nikki's microphone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he used to do a little, uh... Half... Way... Half, um... Half time? Here? Man, I could really use that now that I'm really into the show. No, no, Scruffles. I can't. You're right. It's what he would want. I know what I must do. 
I gotta message all the patrons and let them know about the new Witcher episode, <laughs> and season four, and the season three, act three finale. Uh, let me just message Queso Loco, Jerry Benitados, Victoria Madrid, Gretan Beignet, Alex Escapes My Ass, Ace Andrews, Regina Russell, Sam Olivos, Jordan Cobb, The Unnamed Rogue, MB Star, Doubtful Guest, Michael Richters, Davis Walden, Denny Dewdrop, Myth Mouse, Kylie Wolf, Brandon, and Bishop Bridge, Twiglets, Joanna, Stan Sitzman, Scrambles, The Death Dealer, Aaron Adams, Nathan Mesnerd, Ruth Anardos, Carrie Holmes, Stoner Panda, Melissa Rain, Hensational, Butts of Plenty, Uvular Nutria, Normally Me, Dane Kohlhoff, Loon, Faust the Heavenly Demonic Monster, Mosh Coffee, Official Anarchy, David Carlton, and Lord Brexen von Wendel III. If only I had an easy way to address the entire Dungeons & Drimbus audience. Hmm? Oh. Now I know what I have to do. Gary, your mother leads you and Grizabeth through the village. And you kind of exit those like larger farm buildings that you saw to the outskirts of town. And you see that the outskirts of town is very hilly. Right now they're covered in snow, but usually would be these kind of grassy mounds. And you see they all have like a big part down the middle with these large indentations leading through them. It's pretty neatly organized in rows. So there's that main path with the big, they almost look like footsteps down them mm. and then to the left or right of either path are these rows of hills and you see the houses are built into the grassy hills kind of like a hobbit home with like the door going directly into the actual like land itself and the windows being carved out of the ground and she opens the door and leads you into a home that is actually in a way, somewhat reminiscent of the cave that you grew up in, but much more like small studio apartment if I'd, <laughs> you know, the, the ground inside, the rock is polished. Uh, it is very nicely decorated. Sophia, why don't you tell us what your, what your home looks like? Well, I am a very um, nostalgic person, so I try to keep it somewhat similar to what I already knew. But as you said, everything has its place. There's cups lining the walls. I am a bit of a mug collector, as I, I like my teas. And um, there's some knittings, happenings thrown over the couches. And there's a lot of just tools around, art covering the walls. Somewhat eccentric, I guess you could say. I'm sorry, I've just been stunned. Hi, I'm Grizabeth. Oh, no, don't please. Uh, Grizabeth, yes, of course. Um... It's it's so nice to finally meet you. And um, likewise, oh my god! And I just have to say, and she like crosses her her hands over her chest and looks back at Gary. Goes, Garima. Gar yeah, that's um. Well, you know, Gary for short. Gary, you you're telling me I didn't know my husband's God's given name all this time. <laughs> How could you not tell her your name was Garamar? Uh, you know, I kind of just wanted to start clean, ma. Huh? I don't know. I, I wanted to. I completely understand. There's no shame in it, son. Um, uh, please come in. Make yourselves comfortable. It's freezing out here. Uh, can I? Can I get you any tea? Um, coffee? Uh, cocoa? Uh, yeah, it's pretty cold out. Maybe some cocoa. <laughs> I, will, uh, I miss your coke. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go put the pot on. You still like it with marshmallows, of course, unless has that changed as well? Ma, come on. I, ha <laughs> I have to ask. You never know. You never know. And Sophia goes into the kitchen and starts to get the kettle on and the chocolate bits and melting them down. And a few minutes later, Sophia comes out with a tray of hot cocoa for you all. Oh, oh hot, hot. Oh. It it is uh, it is quite oh, warm. Sorry, sir. It's good. It's really good, but it's really hot. I mean, it's hot cocoa. I should have known, you know. <laughs> it, it is in the name, I must say. It is right there. <laughs> but yeah, it's really good to see you, man. That's Grizabeth. That's my my wife. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, uh, I I I became. I did it. I, I became a lawyer. Uh, yeah, you did. You did. That's... And, a, and a damn good one at that. Oh. He's uncovering the uh, whole conspiracy and all sorts of... Well, yeah, I'm uh, sure, but yeah, he's um he's up to big things, you know. He's, uh, oh, 
uh, tell me more, please. Um, I, I... Well, yeah, it, it was going okay. I uh, I joined a, a law firm, and we were doing really good, and, and I could somewhat feel good about myself, you know, helping people. Mm-hmm. Then my things really, really went south. Mm. I'll be honest, I've really been kind of cynical. I'm kind of starting to see Dad's path more these days. Uh-huh. Um, uh, how, how, how's that, Sad? How's that? Well, Grisabeth, like, holds your hand while you're talking. And the claws close around her hand. Well, maybe, maybe the old ways started that way for a reason. Being a little guy out here in the new age, you get, you just get kicked down over and over. And, mm. You know, sure, I'm proud to, uh, go against the grain and then be a successful somewhat successful very successful (laughs) Gary you got a beautiful family you rescued all these people you helped so much Gary your son downplays his accomplishments so much I'm sorry to interrupt sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you Gary no no please I please I mean come on honey you do so much and you see so little of it if uh, if I may I have to say Grizabeth that sort of characteristic does run in the family, unfortunately, and he might have gotten that from me. Oh, oh so I can blame you for it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 100%, but son, um, Gary, I, 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 I guess. <laughs> you can call me whatever you like. Huh? I understand um, how life cannot be uh, easy, uh, and it, it seems like you've been through a lot, and we bring you into this world only hoping that we can create something beautiful for you. And at a point, we, as your parent, you, you know, let you go and discover whatever you need on your own. But I, all that's to say, there's nothing wrong with feeling discouraged or, or feeling like it's just too difficult at times. But your father, if you see yourself going down a similar path, ultimately, he was a, he was a good man. I've fought with him, alongside him. I, I've the choices he made was always for was always for the greatest good, and that greatest good sometimes, though it didn't seem like it was for for you, oh, for myself. About the same guy, ma. Oh, I, I I know it's hard to believe. I do. This guy ripped people's ears off, ma. I, I I know, I know. It was a bit um, a different way of of taking care of people, but. It was a different time as well, um, Garamar, you have to understand. But him ripping people's ears off and, and stealing fingers and, and teeth alongside one of our old, old, old companions um, is, a, is an equivalent to what it is that you are, I, I think, what you are trying to do in ultimately saving others and taking care of them and wanting a better life for yourself and your family. And there's no shame in that. You're doing it in a much more... Um, lawful and respectable way, of course. But Ma, it's... Sure, it's somewhat fulfilling, Ma, but it's brought so much... so many problems and... 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 and death. Garamar, in my old age and with your father's recent passing, I must say, the one thing in life that you can count on is death. It is inevitable, but you can't let that stop you from fighting the good fight, son. Life in itself is a challenge. It's the biggest challenge to live. Do you understand? Yeah. And look how far you've come. Garamar, you are, you're unrecognizable to me. And that, that's not, that's not good. That's not bad. That just, it just is, son. And I don't, I, I have to expect that, of course. Everyone grows. Everyone's changing. I'm so proud of you, son. You did exactly what you wanted to do. And you're still doing it, even when it gets difficult. I see it, I see it, and I see it in your skin. I see it in your eyes, son. Your eyes are telling me so much more than your words are. And I know you're going to keep going, because it's what you're best at. That's something you definitely got from your father. He never stopped fighting, son. I'm sorry I didn't uh, stay in touch. Oh. 
I don't blame you at all. I'm just glad you're here now. Grisabeth squeezes your hand, Gary, and says, And this isn't the last time we're going to come visit. Because uh, you have a uh, you have a grandson. That's right. I I wanted to ask. I wasn't sure if you left him at home or with the with with a family friend or or something. I just um, um forgive me. I I, I yeah, Markin. Um, do you think we could go go to see Dad? Uh, of, of course, of course. Yes. Um. Yes. Let's just um. Let me get some some. Uh, more appropriate winter clothing. Uh, would you all have um, a coat or do you need a coat? Grisabeth, are you all right? I, I have extras as oh, well. Oh, and- I, I'm okay. I, uh, we, we got really nice coats uh, that one okay. of our friends made for us. Oh, um, that's lovely. Okay. All right. Um, well, if, if uh, let me just go um, grab an extra scarf or two and some mittens. I'll, I'll yeah, be yeah, right back. Ahead. I'll be right back. And as she exits the room, she goes, she goes what, Gary? I was going to get to that. She's going to think I'm Freaking crazy sitting here right now with my grandson being kidnapped. Sorry, I just, I, I figured you don't want her to know. I do, but I have so many things I still need to talk about. I don't want to. Okay, her. okay. So I don't want to worry about that. We'll, we'll get to it. Okay, just, sorry. It's okay. He just kind of looks down at the floor. It's, o- it's okay. Okay. Uh, any hot cocoa to go or when just... She, when she walks back in, he smiles like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Girls love that too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sh- shall we then? Yeah. Let's go. All right. She leads you out down the path and to like the very outskirts of town. And at the very outskirts of the small town, you see a cemetery. There's like a small funeral home attached to it. And it is just a plot of land surrounded by a nice wrought iron fence and a number of tombstones. Some bigger, some smaller. None of them too extravagant. And she eventually leads you to one of them and it is a relatively plain tombstone some nice border engravings and it reads Voltimar father husband fierce protector um here well here here he is um or what's left of him I suppose how was he when he left it's just like I told you son he never stopped fighting were you with him? No, no, um, I, I was not, no. Did you guys, um, stay in touch, or? Uh, we, uh, yes, I mean, I, I tried to as much as I could, and, um, he responded whenever he felt he wanted to, um, we still remained friends at the least, I think, being, a one of my oldest friends, one of the longest friendships and connections I'd had. So that's not something, it's not something that goes away all too quickly. Did you know what he was up to after you guys uh, split? Your father was a very, uh, at times, troubled man with uh, his hands and a lot of different messes of other, of other people. Eventually he stopped um, telling me too much as I, as I would continue to try and encourage him to stay out of it. But being the protector that he was, he always felt the need to, and I, it's admirable, at least. Did he go naturally, or did he get himself into something? It was a natural thing, son. Okay. Did he ever men- mention me? Every time... He wrote to me. There was always some mention of you. Uh, yes, son, he, you were always on his mind. I, I, I know that might be difficult to hear or not what you expected, but again, your father loved you. Funny way of showing it, then. Oh, I know. <laughs> that I know. So, Grizz and Shan, a grandson. Uh, yes, yes. Um, He's wonderful. He's, his name is Calvin. Calvin, what a lovely name. <laughs> He's about four years old now. Unfortunately, also like Dad, I kind of, for a while, wasn't making a lot of time for my family. And I was kind of missing him grow up. Um, but then lately, I, I, I have been giving more time for the family. Uh, 
you know, I tried to balance work and family. And, of course, of course. And sleep. <laughs> um, I threw out social life. My best friend is a fucking pony, which I love, but, you know, it's a pony. Uh, no shame, son, no shame. I, honestly, I, I love working with animals more than fucking... Uh, man, mer kind. Mm -hmm. Just so... Yeah, work got really complicated. I, I live... I guess I should tell you, I live in Green Barrow. Uh-oh. Yeah, I have a little decent home. Chris and Calvin. Mm -hmm. So, I was getting really stiffed with work. You say, you know, Christopher says so successfully, yeah, but money was tight for a while. And it just got to a point where I couldn't do it anymore. And I was like, look, it got really bad. Um, so bad, I had... First, one of my colleagues got murdered. Oh my goodness, son, I'm so sorry. And then, I find out the one who did it was another colleague. And so, you know, you get a betrayal like that, you, of course you're gonna lose hope for the world, you know? Like, mm -hmm. we were all close. It was, a, it was unfathomable. We, I mean, we didn't start off close, you know, but we were solving mysteries together and, and just like I said it got really bad and, and I lost a lot of good friends along the way and I got so scared because um not only did this colleague kill my friend but basically the whole judicial system is corrupt and it turned out solving my problems dad's way you know with the uh sword or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with bloodshed, it just... I hate to say it, Mom, but at first it felt good. And two, it it, it felt natural. And three, it, it, it oftentimes worked out better. It's like, why even try to suppress this natural thing? Like, it, it's it's just the dis... You know, it's just a disadvantage the whole way around. It, it, always get kicked... People think, just because we're the little guys, like, we're weak, we'd be kicked around, and we're so much stronger than people give us credit for. And so, I kind of, um, yeah, I'm not very civil anymore, I guess. I, I've been, I've been, um, I'm not, I'm not a nerdy kid anymore, <laughs> you know, I kind of, like I said, I kind of grew into dad's shoes. I kind of stepped into that fucker's shoes. Hey, hey, Garamar. I, I, I know how you felt about your father, but don't speak too ill of the dead. At least not when you're right in front of them. You, yeah. Um, no, you're right. I am thankful, I guess, for him. My dad, I don't know if you can hear all this. I don't hate you. I admit, I do miss you. I think about you from time to time. But you, uh, you gotta be honest, old man. You know, you, you didn't play a fair hand either, you know. You, and I'm sure you had your reasons, but it's, it's your, um, we're past that now. You know, I, I, I'm still thankful and maybe a built character, but. Elizabeth puts a hand on your shoulder. <laughs> and, um. I guess I just wish I could have said that to your face. So, yeah, rest in peace, <laughs> old bastard. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll miss you. So, yeah, I don't know. You can listen if you want, Dad. He turns to Mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, it got so bad, Ma. And I got so scared. I wanted to keep my family safe. So I ran away from home. I just dropped everything, didn't tell anybody where I was going. I changed my name. I left. Um, I just, I went as far north as I can go. Mm. And I met some really great people. And then of course I lost some really great people. And it turns out none of that fucking matters. It's, they're, they're everywhere. And so, you were asking about Calvin, and, um, they took him, huh? <laughs> My son. 
What do you What do you mean, Sam? What do you mean? Who took him? The LLC that some 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 corrupt world New World Order just they knew how to piss me off. I don't know. They just took my son. I don't know where he is. I'm trying to find him. I I was up. I was caught up in my own things. I'm sorry I missed you, Dad. And um. I just knew I had to see you, and I just don't know where to turn Ger- anymore. I- Garamar, Garamar, calm down, Garamar. And Sophia's gonna like bring him into like a hug, and just like hold. No, him. Ma, you should be freaking out. Ger- I-, Ger- I don't know where Ger- my Ger- son Ger- is. Ger- I fucked Ger- up. Garamar, please. And Sophia's like is gonna like cradle Garamar's face in her hands. Yes, it's scary, and I'm sorry. I'm so sorry about them taking your son. We need to cl- we need to clear our heads. You need to remain level headed. Do you understand? That's the only way you're going to be able to find Calvin. I know that sounds like shit advice, but you need to trust me on this one. I'm your mother. I know a thing or two. Gary's kind of regressed and can't even look his mom in the eye. He's yeah. like so ashamed. Okay. Okay. Listen, you've come this far. You're not about to stop. I know that. You know that. Grizabeth. Grizabeth knows that. Grizabeth nods. Of course. She's like biting her lip. Like you see her eyes are watery, but she's okay. We're going to do everything we can to find Calvin. He's safe, I'm sure of it. He's going to be okay. I don't know who these people are. I don't know how. I, you've said a lot of words. I don't know. LLC, I don't know what any, I don't know what it means. I want to. I do. And I, 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 I don't even know. But we're going to find him and he's going to be okay. And you're going to have your family together again. I promise. Whatever it takes. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. It's okay to step into your father's shoes for moments like these. If you need to fight fire with fire, son, then you do what you have to do. Do you understand? Completely. Good. Uh, Let's take this back to the house, and then we can finish the conversation there. How about that? Gary looks at the tombstone of his father, and he says, Yeah, okay. All right. And a couple minutes later, you guys arrive back at your mom's house. All right. Uh... hmm. Uh, the colleagues that you once had, the the one who was, um, I guess, killing, killing the others, um, are they still around? Are they? Are you still in contact with anyone? Oh uh, no, I. Okay, I wanted to ask you. I don't know what to do. I I just my only lead right now are the my other old colleagues, but I got to admit, um, he's an asshole. One of. <laughs> I just don't want to work with them anymore. Uh huh. And that's that's more than fair, son. Trust me. I dealt with your father for years. Okay, also an asshole. I I can't trust him because I don't know if they're with him right now or if he got tortured and said things. That's why I had to leave town. Much to leave it all. But okay, I, I have this. He just holds up Ostrogon's rubber paper. Basically, it's like an instant mail. Instant message. I, I just write something on here. He's, he scribbles a happy face. And uh, whoever has the other paper, um, they see, well, no matter where they are, they see the same message. So they were trying to reach out to me. I kind of didn't tell them what I was doing. I didn't say who I was with, where I was. I didn't say anything. But when they took Calvin, they were the only people... That I could reach out to, so I just told them that my son was taken, and they said to meet them at Opula. So, well, son, I mean, you might have to risk this one if the only thing that's holding you back from working with some of these people is the fact that they're assholes. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think that's enough reason to not try. At least no, they, they might know something. It's more that they could still be working with them, the killer. Or, or, the, or the killer could just uh, be pretending to be them. I don't know who actually has the paper, if you know what I mean. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I, th- I see, I see. Um, There's no way to prove it. They can't send, uh, they can't put like, um, almost like a, I guess not pictures. Pictures aren't real here. Drawings of themselves, that wouldn't work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they just send a drawing. It's a portrait of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could draw a selfie, I guess. Of course, but. right. But that's uh, what, what assurance <laughs> is that? I understand. Um, son, you might have to risk this one. That's part of the reason 
why I came to see you. I might be in some serious trouble. Listen, son, I am old. I am very, very old. And y- y- I, you know, actually, sorry, uh, no offense. I, I, I don't mean to be forward, but you look great for your uh, age. I mean, what's your secret? Do you use, is, is it the healing spa? Is it face cream? Um, you know, it's an interesting uh, mix. Uh, <sighs> it's it's a bit of the healing spa. It is a bit, I, I do do a, a, a bit of a skin I mean, you don't look routine. any older than I do. Look at us, Gary. We could be sisters. <laughs> and she holds her face like together. Uh, well, I am, um, I, I don't. Garamar, I actually don't know if I ever... I don't see why I would mention this to you when you were younger. I... I wasn't always a goblin, son. Um, um, like... You would... You were a sperm? <laughs> All right, son. I need you to work with me just a smidge here. Because in that case, I wasn't always a goblin yep, either. Yep, that's uh, true. You weren't. I... Yep, that's... I remember that one very, very well. Now, listen. Oh. Now, listen. We're not getting into Ew. that. We're not. <laughs> Listen, your father was an Mom, asshole. Where are he, my brothers, Mom? Your father was an asshole, but he knew what he was doing, all right? I will give him that much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's not okay? Ridiculous. <laughs> Jerks. It's all okay when they talk about it, but when Mayor talks about it, it's weird. Uh, ooh. You're his mom. <laughs> yeah, it's my mom. <laughs> all right, all right, enough, it's enough, enough. Son. Too much fun. Too. Much. I am your yes, yes, and I'm your mother. Obviously, you need you know these things. You have a child as well. Grizabeth, I'm sure can agree. Come on now. Anyway, not the point. Grizabeth blushes. The point here is the point. I, I'm a cool mom. The point here, <laughs> the point here is, <laughs> I wasn't always a goblin in the sense that I, I was born a human. What? God, I was taken. I was taken and I was transformed into a goblin. It was a long time ago. I was so young. It's it's around the time that I met your father, of course. Um, obviously prior to meeting him, but um, oh my God. that is, I suppose, my, my secret as to how I look so good, if you will. Um, Damn genetics. Gary looks at his hands. Oh my God. And he sits down. Oh my god. I I know, son. I know. I it um I probably should have told you sooner. I just it it didn't it's not important. It doesn't seem I I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe I, I you, maybe I should have mentioned it. You were how uh, uh, Yeah. You how? What? I uh, well, um Are you fucking with me. Like, no, son, please. No, of course. Why would I do that? At this moment, there's no reason to fuck with you. You've already been through so much. I have no re- I haven't seen you in ages. Why would I fuck with you? Well, I fucks with you, ma. No, I mean, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen. It was a very close call. Do you understand? I I I was given to a group of hags for the sake of saving this adventure, quote unquote, and but the things I witnessed, I saw them turn these girls, young girls, human girls, into these creatures. That's something I can never forget. Those images, that transition, it's, it's, it keeps me up at night still sometimes. How, how old were you? In human years, I was about 13 years old. Oh my god. And you never, you never tried to change back? <sighs> we, we technically tried. There has to be a way. I mean, the, you turn to... Son, at this point, I, it just wasn't important, son. But if this tells you anything, let it tell you that it doesn't matter what you're born as or what you get turned into. You're full of surprises, son. And I think you still have a lot to surprise yourself with. It's not going to be easy what you have in front of you at all. I, But I know you can do it. And I know deep down you know that too, and I know you're tired. But you can rest easy once you have your son back. If, if, if they're still alive, I don't think they're going to stop. Because they're going to be like me. And they're not going to give up, no matter what. And, and what exactly is this thing that's not going to stop and not going to give up? Basically, it's like a new world order where they can judge... Do whatever they want to whoever they want, kill whoever they want, and some people get to commit crimes and walk freely. Some people are completely innocent and they get killed or thrown in jail for life. Um, 
Or they kidnap children, apparently. I think this is more reason for you to reconnect with uh, your asshole friend. I do, I do. He's not like me, Ma. He, he's fucking stubborn. He, he just wants to do things the quote-unquote righteous way. But I really don't think he's doing it for that reason. Like he claims he is. But he's very competitive. Mm -hmm. Always wanted to win. Just wanted to be right. And he never appreciated me. But, I mean, I don't care. Like, he sounds besides insecure, my, son. He sounds very Besides insecure. my feelings. Like, I could put my feelings aside, you know. Sure. If I have to, but... It, yeah, I, I, we see very differently. And he's, as far as I know, has stuck to it and, and, and tries to, you know, fight in this, in this lane where he's, he's, he, he prefers to fight this uphill battle or it's not even fair anyway. So, well, son, you were doing the same exact thing, but I changed. You're fighting the same battle just differently. It's not uphill anymore, Ma. If anything, it's, it's slightly downhill. I'm stronger this way. And he, if he doesn't see it the same way, he's not going to make it. <laughs> I don't know. It, once I put down the the glasses and then and, and the, and the pen and the gaff, when I picked up the sword, it just, it felt right. I felt guilty, but it felt right. And then things started, started working a little better for me. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. I have to meet up with him, but he's not going to do it the way that I want to. Well, maybe that's a good thing, son. Especially if you're sitting here and telling me how much you want to fight it, then maybe he'll show you that path again. And you can then determine better what path you want to continue forward on. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're right. Sometimes, yes. Well, I mean, you know, every now and again. I'm very sorry, son. I'm sorry I I didn't stick close by. No, oh, please. I ended up leaving too. It would be hypocritical of me to be upset at you. I understand. Don't be angry at yourself for changing. Don't be angry at yourself for leaving. You came back anyway. I focus on that. I'm glad that uh, we had this talk. Me too. Was not expecting it to go like this at all. I had, I mean, of course, I, I, I wasn't <laughs> expecting you in general. I was just uh, hoping you would swing by. And I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm. I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I've said it already, Garamar. I am so happy you're here. Yeah, ma. I, I love you. <laughs> I love you too, Garamar. Oh, um. Listen. I'm hug you. You're. I'm hug you now. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it in, son. Come here. Come here. And Sophia, although she is very old, is fully gonna like bear hug this kid. <laughs> <laughs> this kid. You bet. You're a child to me. You're my child. Taller child. <laughs> yes, but still my child. Still my son. You hear me? Oh goodness. Um. Uh. Before I forget, I have something that I have been wanting to give you. Well, a long time now. Um, you, you, you might not remember, but just uh, one moment. Just give me a second. I'll be right back. And Sophia's going to step away, head to her room to grab something. I didn't get anything for my ma, Chris. What? what? We didn't get anything for my ma. What? <laughs> uh, do, do you want me to grab, like, some beef jerky out of the wagon? <gasps> oh, we don't, I mean... Oh! Oh, I mean, you gave her a hug. Um, that, um, I, I got um. Okay, in the in the wagon, there's there's some there's some jewelry there's some jewelry I took from the uh the monastery. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. And she like slips out and just books it to the <laughs> carriage. <laughs> um, and Sophia comes back into the room, looking at you now. I actually don't even know if it'll fit again. You were so much smaller. Uh, Sophia, please roll a perception check for okay. me. Okay. That's a nine. Okay, the door makes a loud squeak as Elizabeth tries to slide in uh, unnoticed. Oh. <laughs> Three, 
um, uh, Grisabeth, I just... Um, Sorry, continue. <laughs> no, please. Uh, you actually might be able to help me with this at some point, but um, this might be too small for you now, Garamar. But um, this was yours when you were very young and before you left. Um, well, it's um, it's an amulet. I, I have one as well, and um, Sophia will like pull out hers, and she's she shows it to you and Grisabeth. I've worn it. Well, I've worn it since you were born. <laughs> but I think this might be a good moment to give you not only yours, but mine as well. And Sophia starts to take off her amulet. She places it in Garamar's hands. When you find Calvin, because you will find him, Garamar, mark my words, you have to give him one and you will keep the other for yourself. And Gary, as you hold the amulets in your hand, you feel them kind of like vibrating and pulling towards each other. This will help you find each other if you were to ever get lost again. Wow. I, I wish now I had told you that sooner. That way maybe you would have worn yours uh, before leaving, but take them. I'm going to make sure you see Calvin. Damn right you will. Oh, uh, your fireplace went out. Hold on. Gary's going to cast Bonfire. Jesus. <laughs> I'm also a wizard now. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, that is a neat trick, son. <laughs> yeah. I feel like there's so much more to know. Um, yeah. But, all right. Uh, uh, are you hungry? Would you like to stay for lunch? Um, I... Uh, I could prepare something. We can go uh, grab something if we'd like. I, I know you. I'm sure you want to be up and on your way back, uh, I guess, towards Opula, you said. Um, I, I think one meal with my mom wouldn't hurt. <laughs> that sounds good. That's, I, I'd like that. I'd like that, Garamar. Okay. Let's do that. This has been Your Honor. Your Honor features the vocal talents of Nicholas Benetato as Gary Mogbach and Amanda Fernandez Acosta as Sophia Hasselman. The rest of the world is voiced by your DM, Giancarlo Herrera. Editing was done by Hannah Schooner and Giancarlo Herrera with sound design by Giancarlo Herrera. If you want to support the show, consider checking out the links in the show notes or go to patreon.com slash drivers. Our patrons get access to exclusive perks like our After the Show show, After the Drimbus, free exclusive merch, bonus series, and the chance to create items for the show or have NPCs named after you. Oh, and don't forget to tweet using hashtag Drimbus to be entered to win a free Dungeons & Drimbus sticker. Thank you all so much for listening, and I do declare... I'll see you all next week.